If you're watching this video, you either hate code reviews or you've never tried them. If you're the minority of software developers who love code reviews, you're probably not watching. So let's figure out how to make them better. Code reviews don't have to suck. They can become a great source of valuable information. My favorite kind of code reviews are the ones that happen during pair programming sessions where I'm working with another developer and we're discovering together the right way to build something. Every one of us were at different levels and typically on a team we have different developers at different levels of maturity. That's really good because it brings different perspectives. It helps the seniors normalize and, and help uh, share information. A lot of times being able to just explain to someone else ideas is one of the most valuable ways to solidify those ideas. So having a senior actually share and mentor d junior developers is one of the most valuable things for an organization, as well as the individuals within those organizations. And that can happen through code reviews. This is why I'm a big proponent of mob programming, because when we mob or work in ensembles or in teams and do development together, we can learn from each other. And that is so incredibly valuable. There's an illusion that if we work in parallel, we're getting more done. And in some situations, that's totally true. But a lot of work in software development can't be parallelized. Or when it is, then unparallelizing it back into the project can become very expensive. And so finding ways that the team can normalize together can be really, really valuable. I've heard for years managers say to me, I want my teams to be cohesive. I want everyone to be working together on the same page, doing the same practices. I want to have collective code ownership where the code, the code looks the same regardless of who wrote it. All of these things are incredibly valuable, but they don't happen just randomly. You know, we got to create an environment for them to happen. And one of the most productive environments for that to happen, one of the most fertile grounds is in a mob is in pair programming sessions. And this is another reason why we want the teams, our teams to be doing these practices. If not every day, all the time, at least on a regular and a disciplined basis, we have to build into our schedules as developers time to learn. You know, learning hour is an incredibly valuable thing and it's something that every team should practice. An hour every week invested in learning something new as a team can be amazingly valuable. The reason that the top teams in the world do this is that they manage their managers recognize that they're much more productive because of this, you know? And an hour, my goodness, that's just one fortieth of your work week, right? You couldn't invest that to learn something new, you know? I mean, the potential for that paying off is so huge. And also because it's being done in a group, the learning hour. There's the potential for collaboration and communication. There's so much value in it. It's much different than a meeting, a learning hour. When done well, code reviews can be a valuable way for the team to learn and understand parts of the system that they're not currently working on. Code reviews can give developers feedback on their work. They can help provide consistency in the code that they write and help propagate good development practices throughout the team. Here are seven strategies for better code reviews. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein. Number one, do code reviews regularly. Code reviews are such an important practice that they should be done on a regular basis, usually at the end of an iteration or sprint, or whenever there's new code to be checked into the system. Developers should expect all their code to be reviewed by at least one other developer, and likewise expect that they will be reviewing code from other developers themselves. It's a good practice because it's the way we can learn from each other. And it's also a great opportunity to learn how to give feedback in the right way. This is something that, ironically, we haven't been taught. And these are incredibly important skills when we're doing code reviews, especially listening, being able to hear because a lot of times we're not so clear on what we're doing until after we've done it. And so the developer who is reviewing their own code 
in a lot of ways, gets to see their code from a new perspective for the first time in a code review as they're walking through it. So recognize that. It, it'll happen to you when you're walking through code for others. And give people the space to, to discover what they're really doing when they're, when they're walking you through their code. Number two, invite everyone. Code reviews can be fun and empowering. Invite others to attend, to show off your work. And it can be good to get other developers' constructive feedback. Different people provide different perspectives, which can be helpful. Number three, focus on why, not what. It can be helpful to ask for the kind of information that you're looking for up front. Usually, going into the reasons choices were made can be helpful for getting people to understand your approach. I like to think about code reviews as a way of looking at the philosophy behind the design. And this is much more valuable in a code review than arguing about where we put curly brackets. Helping others see why you chose a particular approach and not just what you did can be really valuable in a code review. The purpose of code reviews is to help us learn from each other. And this is absolutely critical, I think, in software development. When we're doing code reviews, we want to do them in such a way that they're not interrupting our workflow. So I like to do them either early in the morning, first thing, or like right before lunch or something like that, so that it's at a pre-scheduled time. Number four, keep things clear. Sometimes things that seem clear to us is not clear to other people. If people can't understand what your code is doing without reading your comments, it's probably time to refactor. Using intention-revealing names is every bit as important as designing the algorithms. If an algorithm is complex, break it up across multiple lines with intermediate results so that it's understandable and that you can verify each intermediate step. This makes the code much easier to understand and much more straightforward to debug if needed. Machine cycles are cheap. Rather waste machine cycles than your mental cycles. Number five, discuss design trade-offs. Help people understand the trade-offs that you made so that they can better understand your design choices. Sometimes you have to pay the price in one area to gain value in several other areas. Local optimization only has value if it also optimizes the whole process. If it only moves a bottleneck somewhere else, then it may not be worth doing. Look for ways of making code easier to work with by injecting dependencies and creating well-defined interfaces. Number six, point out what worked. Feedback is an important part of code reviews, but many developers have trouble giving or getting feedback. It can be helpful to start with what worked. It's also okay to take different approaches than others as long as they are still providing clarity and extensibility. There's a lot of times that we may do something differently, but there are many valid approaches to software development. And just because we may have done something differently doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. As long as it gets the job done and provides some level of extensibility, then it's good enough. There are many ways to solve the same problem. And just because it may not be the way you would have solved the problem doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. Number seven, share aesthetics. Adopting collective code ownership means that teams agree on common standards and practices for developing software. The coding standards document should be the code itself. It should be impossible to tell who wrote the code just by looking at the code. This helps the rest of the team read and understand the code that other team members write and provide consistency throughout the code base. This helps us get a deeper understanding of the system and probably helps us build our little pieces to be more consistent with the rest of the system. Code reviews can be one of the most valuable practices for learning and writing better software and for understanding what our teammates are working on. Don't waste time on minor issues like formatting and instead focus on why particular design approaches were taken. This helps others gain a deeper understanding of the code being reviewed and makes code reviews more valuable and more fun. For more insights and strategies, check out my next video.
Until then, happy coding. Remember, the, it gave us completely wrong directions at the top, and you have top. to be at the last thing at the bottom to, to the know what the real way of doing it or you are on it. That's good. So, the, and this is where I failed. Where I failed. Are you doing this with Canvas? No. I feel like that would actually be like a neat way to do it too. It's. But uh, do you mind if I ask it to create the files and zip them for you? Uh, sure, but like I say, it's, it's, that's already done. These are already steps done. that are done. Okay. We don't need to focus on that. What we need to do is figure out how, how to enable developer mode in Premiere Pro, or if there is even such a thing.